Well, good morning, Pavel First and I met to this church. We are very happy to welcome you to this, the PATH worship service. It is our own, it is our contemporary service, but we, we take our worship very seriously over here, even though it might, even though it is our contemporary service. And we are on, we are so happy to see so many faces here with us. We are so happy of the things that we will be getting to do in our service today that we have not done for a while. And um, of course, thank you to those who are still joining us remotely. But church, we have all been called together here this morning, this this hour of our Sunday, this hour of our week. So we will we will begin with a time of worship. Father God, just thank you so much for for every life gathered here in this place. Father God, some come from devastation, unplanned things from Delta, and some of us come with other things weighing our hearts down. Some might come this morning with, with blessings and praise. But Father, through it all, let us praise you in the good. Let us come to you and lean on you and put those things that hurt us down at the foot of the cross. Father, let us be present in this place just as your spirit is present where these people are gathered. We love you, Father, and pray to see you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, church, I would invite you to stand as we begin with a time of music this morning. Worthy of all our praises. 
Is like the mighty mountain. 
so much going on, things, things outside of our control, the hurricanes affecting so many people, other things affecting this brother or that sister, these people that mean so much to us here in this body of faith. And dear Lord, just let, let us remember today that your love reaches so high and that you are always faithful and God you are always good and you are always righteous and through it all we, we have a God to lean on we have a God who is worthy of praise and a God who is worthy of worship because he never leaves us and he never forsakes us and Father God as we continue on we will Lift our voices in song as we have done, and we will open your word, and we will read, and we will meditate on the word of your scripture, and the word that you have given to our pastors. And Father, let us let us also now let us pray in this congregation, and let us meditate on the words of that prayer that your Son Jesus Christ Himself taught us to pray. Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of You may be seated. I think for the first time in a while, we are going to have children's time with Miss Leslie. Yes, I'll invite all the children to come up. 
that would like to come and sit on a dot. If we don't have enough dots, I have more to come on up. Find a dot. A circle, a dot, whatever you want to call it. We've gotten used to these by now, so. You never did that? Okay, all righty, guys. Well, guess what? Today, I want to talk about something pretty cool. Celebrations. Have you ever celebrated? We're going to celebrate today. So, guess what? Hang on, listen up. I'm glad to see you all today, and we are going to celebrate. We are so happy to be here. And I have some noisemakers back there. It's going to help me celebrate. Listen. Good job, guys. All right, we're going to do that a couple more times. Okay, so come on up, Ellen. You good? You good? All right, can you see? Okay. Well, today we have our party noisemakers on. I have my party hat on. What do you think we're celebrating? Is it my birthday? Nope. Is it a pep rally? Nope, it's not a pep rally. Is it um, a holiday? Is it Christmas? No. No? What are, no, it's not today. It's not a parade. What are we celebrating? Well, listen for just a minute. I will tell you. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And the word rejoice is kind of like celebrate. So we should be happy and celebrate on birthdays. We should celebrate on holidays. Listen. And we should celebrate when? All the time. God says we shouldn't just celebrate him just in the fun times. But we should celebrate him when things are tough, too. And, you know, we've had a lot of tough lately, right? We've had the mask. We've had a couple of hurricanes come through. But we're still here together so we can celebrate that God has let us be together. Because it's a pretty amazing gift that he gives us every single day. And that's why we celebrate. <laughs> okay, let's bow our heads in prayer, okay? Lord, we come to you, and we are so thankful that we can celebrate and be happy all the time, even when things are tough, because we know that you are always with us. Amen. All right, one more time before we go back to our parents, I want you all to, when I count to three, you can make your biggest, loudest noise. Are you ready? One, two, three. Yay! Y'all can do better than that. Let's try that again. One, two, three. Well, church, as our children are finding their way back to their seats, I would invite you to stand as we continue on with our time of worship and music this morning.
scripture today is one that uh, for some people it's a little hard to take. It's a little hard to take because it's very, it's very almost overly optimistic. It doesn't seem very realistic for what we kind of go through on a day-to-day -day basis uh, because we're told to rejoice always. Now how do you do that? How do you do that uh, when, uh, for instance, in my own life I, I was up all night mother-in-law passing, uh, my wife is grieving, how do you rejoice through something like that, uh, passing of a wonderful Christian a woman. Uh, how do you rejoice when you've got two hurricanes in less than a month? How do you rejoice when you have difficulties at work and uh, when you feel persecuted and, 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 and put upon it at, at school and other places? When you lose your job, when your marriage falls apart, we have problems with your family or in your neighborhood. How do you rejoice with that? Well, that's what we're going to look at today. And the fact that uh, Paul wrote this at a time uh, of great difficulty, even in his own life. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Now, a lot of people don't bring their Bible, but if you have one of those cell phone things, you can download a Bible app and you can have it right there. I like Blue Bible. I did a devotional about that. Uh, but there are a lot of Bibles out there for you to get that are free. Uh, don't pay for them. You don't have to do that. But just get a free one. Philippians 9, 4 through 9. Paul says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. 
Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the peace of God will be with you. And folks, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Before we pray, I uh, just want to introduce you to someone if you haven't met him. This is Reverend Hans Mayors, uh, full name Johannes uh, Hans, welcome. Hans is staying with us a few days, weathering the storm here, literally, uh, because he has a pedal prayer ministry, has a website, he goes around the country encouraging people to pray, connecting churches together. And so, uh, Hans, it's good to have you with us today. And glad you're here. His bike is being repaired, and he's going to uh, pick it up, and he'll be on his uh, way to other church work. He came here originally to help out with Hurricane Laura in South Louisiana. So, Hans, welcome. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for the day. It's been a tough weekend for many people and still is. Uh, people are still recovering, as you know, and Lord, we just pray that you'll be with them, be with families that have been through so much this month. Lord, I do pray for my own family. I pray for my wife and uh, for all of us affected by our recent death. And Lord, we pray, Lord, as we Look at your word today that you will strengthen our lives with the, the truth that's in it, that we are to live our lives on the rejoicing side, not on the regret side. So help us to see that today. Lord, I thank for everybody that's here, for the children we just saw up at the front. We thank you for the families that raised them and all the families that join together to make this a great church community. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. There's a story that comes out of Africa, and Father Richard Grimble shares this story from the little African country of Burkina Faso. Now, Burkina Faso is really a, uh, could be a fragmented area because it's a lot of different tribes of the Maasai people that live there. Uh, at the time of their emperor, Mora Naba, Mora Naba was a great emperor there, he did a lot to unite that a group of tribes as one country. And one of the, the peoples, the tribes that he had to conquer was the Kaesina people. And he extracted tribute or taxes from them every year. So he would send a delegation to the Kaesina people, Kaesina people, they would send the taxes back, as you would think. Well, at one time of peace in uh, Bacana Faso, he, he really thought that things were okay, and he wanted to sort of honor them as a people, part of his system. So he took his own son, Najiba, and he sent him as sort of an official royal representative from the emperor with a light guard of guys. Well, what happened is the Kaesina leaders saw this as a great opportunity to make a statement. So they did away with the guards and they captured uh, Najiba and they stripped him of his royal robes, they put him in working clothes, they put him in a tent where many of the lower class workers would live. He had to sleep on a dirt floor, he had very little to eat. He was basically a captive of those now angry people trying to exact their revenge. And so he would be sent every morning at dawn out to the fields with the lowest workers and and he, he worked the fields with his hands, his hands that were not used to that sort of manual labor. And, and uh, he, he worked up in the hot sun all day. And as he worked, the children of the village were told to go and make fun of him, which they did. They threw rocks at him and called him names. 
the women of the village would pass by on their way back and forth and, and they would also deride him and make fun of him, do whatever they could to make his life miserable. But the Jeba would not bend to that. In fact, he sang every day. He sang when he got up. He sang as he worked out in the fields. He sang as he went to bed every day. They could not break his spirit. And so finally, the elders of that tribe got together and they called Ajiba together and they said, why? Why are you continuing to sing? What's up with you? And Ajiba said this. He said, you may have taken away my royal robes. You have made, tried to take away my pride. You have brought shame upon me, caused me to sleep on the ground, given me very little to eat. Now you ask me why, in spite of all this, I can sing. Well, I can sing because you cannot take away my title and who I am. I am Maranaba's first son. I am proud of that. I am a prince and I will never react to your shameful behavior. Think about that. Not because of his circumstances, which had gone from probably wonderful to terrible, but because of who he knew he was. He's a child of the king. We folks, like Paul, base our ability to rejoice, even in the most difficult times of our lives, not because of our circumstances, not because of all the wonderful things that are happening in our lives and things we can tell and brag about. They are there because we are a child of the King. We are God's children. He loves us. He cares for us. He watches over us. He leads us and he guides us. And no one can take that away from you and I. Hurricanes can't, power losses can't, deprivement can't, divorces can't, job loss can't, recessions cannot, a pandemic cannot take that away from us that we are children of God. We're ch children of the King. And so Paul lived his life out of that reality. And the story is told in two places where Jesus came to be with his disciples out of the Sea of Galilee. This turbulent body of water receives these storms that come off the Mediterranean Sea. And they create a chopping effect just like Lake Pontchartrain does. Shallow body, wide body of water. They can break a boat apart, especially a boat made in the first century. And there they are. They're out floundering in this storm. It's all around them. It's raging there. And they are doing their best. They are professional fishermen, many of them. They know how to do this. They've done it before, and yet they are losing the battle against this wind and waves. Have you ever felt that in your life? Do you know how to do this? And yet you are losing the battle with the wind and the waves in your life. And they cry out to Jesus, Lord, save us. They have to wake him up. He is in the boat with them. And it finally occurs to them at some point of their struggling with this boat and the oars and the rigging and everything else, after they're thoroughly exhausted, it finally occurs to the disciples, hey, why don't we wake up Jesus? He's in the boat. They wake up Jesus in the book of Mark, it says, because it's recorded in several gospels, but in the book of Mark, they ask him a very honest question that many times we really ask of God. Lord, don't you care that we are perishing? Don't you care what we are going through? 
Don't you care that we are suffering? Don't you care that we are dying? Lord, where are you? Jesus stands up. Of course, he was with them all the time. He was with them all the time. And Jesus, with the word of his mouth, maybe the wave of his hand, calms the storm completely and everything is okay. That's a beautiful story. It teaches us to find Jesus first in our lives. Why? Because he's here. He is present in our lives. He is with us in the boat. Let's find him first. That's a beautiful lesson for us. It also teaches us to be honest with God and say, Lord, I need your help. Where are you? That's called prayer. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, Paul is telling us to do just that. Go to God with our worries. Don't worry about anything, but instead, make it your choice to go to God first. Leave it with Him. But also, very important, do you really think this was the last storm that would ever be on the Sea of Galilee or the Lake of Tiberias, as it's called today? And that's the right light. You think they don't have storms anymore? Of course not. They have storms all the time. I've been out there in wind and rain. One time when we went to, it wasn't a storm, but it was a mess. They have storms. You think these disciples, that was the last storm ever in their lives? No, they would have other kinds of storms. They would have the storm of despair and hopelessness as they saw their Lord and Savior arrested in the garden. They would have storms in their lives and despair when they saw him on trial in a mock trial, saw him tortured overnight, saw him beaten and then bloodied and then nailed on a cross. There would be that storm. They would have the storm of having him in the grave for several days before the resurrection. As they started the new church in Jerusalem, they would have storms in that church, both externally from the persecutors of that area and internally from people trying to tear that church apart. They would have storms when they spread out and, and brought the gospel to other people. The point is, folks, the storms don't end. But the solution does not end either. It's finding the presence of Christ with us. And that's what Paul is talking about here. He says, we have a choice in this. We can worry, we can fret, we can stress out, we can get sick from it. It affect our health, our families, our relationship, our self-image. All of that can be destroyed by worry, but we have a choice. Instead of worrying, we can give it to God. We can come to God and he tells us sort of step by step what to do with prayer, just like the disciples, finding Jesus. He may not seem to be there, but he's there. Finding Jesus, prayer and supplication, what is that? Well, it's like prayer, but it's understanding our role in God's kingdom and God's role in God's kingdom. And that is he is Lord of our lives. He is in control of everything. We need to recognize that, that he has the power to make those changes in our lives. And then with Thanksgiving, and folks, that is so important. I'm not talking about Thanksgiving at grandma's with turkey and dressing here, all right? That's coming up, that's fine. That's not what this is talking about. This is living our lives with a, a, a lifestyle of thanksgiving where we remember what God has done in the past. We live with sort of a holy memory that, you know, I faced a storm two years ago, two months ago, two days ago, whatever it was, and God came through for me. I didn't understand how it was happening then, but I understand it now looking back with thanksgiving. Why? Because we're looking back and we're claiming what God did for us then 
so that we can in the present know what God can do for us now and then hope is projecting that into the future knowing what God will do for us if we stay faithful to him and by that I mean making those choices to not worry but to bring everything to God with thanksgiving with supplication knowing that he can help us and so we have it there folks why do we miss it it's because we choose to miss that in our lives we choose not to do that we do hold on to things we do tend to worry just like those disciples battling the wind and the waves instead of choosing to wake up jesus recognize the presence and the power of god in their lives and Apostle Paul goes on to say, if you do that, if you make that choice, peace of God, which is beyond all our understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Isn't that a beautiful thought? When you love to live that lifestyle, the peace of God guarding your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he adds one more thing talks about how we control our thoughts every day and it puts it back to us as a choice and so he says finally brother think on these things and he gives us a beautiful list of things to think about rather than negative negativity he says whatsoever is true whatsoever is honorable whatsoever is just Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is pleasing, whatsoever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Now I want you to turn on your TV this afternoon and see if you find any of those things on TV. I want you to check out social media. See if you see anything honorable, true, pure, lovely, uplifting, helpful, See if you see any of those things. You usually don't. Paul is saying you have a choice of what you put in your mind. You have a choice every day, every hour, of what you think about. We've been studying this passage, as you know, in, on Wednesday nights in Max Potato's book. And he made a great analogy, I think. You know what an air traffic controller is? You got all these planes in the sky, but the air traffic controller alone, the, or the people or the person that decides what comes out of the sky and lands in the airport. We're kind of like that. We've got all these things, all these things on, we hear, all these things we see, all these negative, hateful, dissenting, politicizing stuff that's flying around all the time in our lives. But you and you alone make the choice of what lands in your airport. You decide what you welcome in to your life. And folks, that puts us on the side of rejoicing or it puts us on the side of distress and worry. And no matter what your circumstance, you can find reason to rejoice. And you're talking to somebody who's living that this morning. Because I just witnessed the passing of a wonderful Christian woman. And yet I can rejoice today. Remembering what she was to us as a family. Knowing that she's got a home in heaven. Knowing that she is a child of the king. She's a princess. She's gone to her great reward. Will you pray with me? Father, help us to realize the power that you've given us to either fight this battle alone or depend upon you. So, Father, help us to make the choice every day to depend upon you. To truly, with everything, by prayer and supplication, come to you. And many times with the wind and the waves in our lives, we forget all about that. The Lord help us to claim it today.
Christ and our band is going to come and sing for us as they do these prayer rails are here for you to come and pray maybe it's been a long time since you thought about your relationship with God and, and, and some of the choices you're making every day how you live your life you found your life full of stress and distress about everything in this world you don't have that peace of Christ. Maybe you'd like to come make that right with God today. I'll be standing here if you have a decision you'd like to make, maybe to trust Christ for the first time with your life. I'd love to pray with you about that. Maybe you've got a call to the ministry of God in your life. Hans answered that call at one point in his life. So maybe you've got that in your life that you'd like to talk about. I'd love to pray about that as we stand, folks. I've heard of an angel
We are getting a little more normal here. We had our children's sermon today, which is great. We continued that. And we had donuts. So bless God. He's good, huh? So that's good. Well, I'll pray for you as you enter another week. I know some of you are still going through some of the uh, results of uh, Hurricane Delta, and our prayers are with you. Let us know if you have any needs or if your neighbors have needs. Uh, we're standing by ready to help in any way we can. Let's be dismissed. Lord, thank you for gathering us here today. Help us to turn everything over to you by prayer and supplication every day. Realize that's a choice we make. So, Father, thank you for being strong and mighty to save and mighty to help us calm the wind and the waves in our lives every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.